वेलकम टू इन बिल्डर चैनल लार्ज लैंग्वेज मॉडल ऑटोमेटर्स पाइथन एक्सपर्ट्स एंड माय डियर फ्रेंड्स हाउ टू इंस्टॉल टर्बो चार्जर्स ऑन योर वेक्टर रिट्रीवर्स इंट्रोड्यूसिंग कॉन्टेक्सुअल कंप्रेशन रिट्रीवर्स यू मस्ट बी वॉन्डरिंग ओके आर वी टॉकिंग समथिंग रिलेटेड टू इंजन नॉट रियली वी आर गोइंग यू विल सी दैट इट इज गोइंग टू बी मच मोर दैन एन इंजन ओके सो वाइट कंप्रेशन if you guys are you know new to vector retrievers if you guys are new to large language models as a whole then i would really suggest that take a look at my earlier videos in this particular channel in the langchain uh, library so uh, in the langchain playlist that is available in this channel so take a look at that and what i want you guys to specifically concentrate is on these retrieval chains or agents and retrieval related uh, videos i'll be sharing these videos to you guys in the uh, in the, attached to this videos also so that should not be a problem for you let us go back to the presentation let me give you a brief background so in case of uh, large language models there is always a context that is uh, required for the large language models right so if you are going to ask a query say if you are going to ask what is the number of rows inside the given data set so you need to have a context right that data set you have to provide to the large language models but usually if your data set is really big then you cannot send the entire data set into it because there is a token limitation like uh, for gpt 3.5 the token limitation is 40 4096 tokens you cannot send all the data and also it's very costly right so we have the document retrievers so you can actually write the data into document retrievers as vector embeddings and then you can use similarity search and get the necessary documents alone and send it as context to the uh, large language models i will again repeat it little slowly so vector retrievers are the are the uh, let us say vector retrievers are equipments okay let us make it mechanical so these vector retrievers will provide you the set of documents or set of data which is relevant to your question okay and that set of data will be compressed or it will be you know collected together and sent to the large language model as a context and the large language model will look at this context and answer your question you see the reply, you see the cycle right your question the set of relevant documents sending to the large language models and then answering now the turbo charger that you are talking about is going to sit in between the question and sending it to large language model so in the between there is the relevant documents that is getting collected that part is where the compression algorithm comes into picture so there are a couple of ways to do the compression so one is you know direct compression where the uh, the data that is collected from the document is compressed by using algorithms and then sent to large language models you can have filters you can have uh, filters by relevance and filters by similarity and finally you have another way of uh, embedding the entire uh, uh, document such a in uh, in such a way that it will have a efficient uh, reply so recent this is uh, the, this particular uh, update regarding the uh, the compression algorithm the compression uh, the contextual compression retrievers was released in in the last week and uh, it it gets updated in uh, once you update the langchain uh, library so this is something that you need to do ensure that you upgrade the lang langchain library that is installed in your system and then only this particular function will work because it's a new update right what we are going to do is so when you want when you practice this step so i will be showing you the code also next but uh, when you practice this step you need to understand you need to keep the same query because you are going to test it so you are going to use the same query and then you are going to test how these basic chain extractors llm chain filter embedding filter and embedding redundant filter works so you need to have the same query to check it i'll be showing it to you how to do that i will also be giving some ways to even get the uh, document so if you have a common document it will be much more easier right and uh, also one of the key point in my videos is always that i target i discuss about the challenges that is getting solved so in this case of uh, uh, this particular compression algorithms or retrievers the challenge getting solved is we get higher quality context this is our main challenge that is getting solved here when you are trying to work with vector retrievers you would have already faced this problem that you are asking some question and the and the reply from the llm is completely different that is because of multiple reasons 
the question that you are asking may not have any kind of relevant documents that is the first first and foremost challenge you will face in case of vector retriever think about it the vector retriever will look at the similar similar documents to your query and that is going to be given as a context to the llm if there is no similar document then you are not going to get any answer at all most probably if you have properly prompt engineered then you will get an answer called i don't know because there is no context and next challenge we face is even if you have a good deal of documents these documents may not be actually related to your uh, query itself so i will show you some examples so that will that will make you understand what is going on inside so this video will dive deep into that so stay tuned for that these are the uh, steps you need to take for so initiating these various kinds of compression algorithms so we have llm chain extractor we have llm chain filter we have embeddings filter so all these things are given in the example you don't need to worry about it this is not something that i am writing it is already there in the lang chain documentation <coughs> excuse me so we are going to dive into the example uh, dive into the code and uh, be ready to practice so this is okay this particular video and uh, you know series of videos that i have been uh, working on in the past one or two weeks has been uh, continuously on various kinds of libraries various kinds of uh, you know uh, uh, class constructs various kinds of modules and all of these have a same uh, same pattern that i introduce introduce a concept of a class introduce a concept of a module i tell to you what it does and then i finally show you show you the code the pattern you need, why i am following this pattern is that there is always a problem that gets solved okay that is once you know what problem you are solving then solving it becomes way more easier and uh, when you are actually reading these documentation when you are reading the various uh, examples that is out there in the in the internet this becomes a challenge so what i have seen is that you see an example but you don't see that why this example is there Uh, whether it is showing the, one of the capabilities of this uh, of that library or whether it is actually solving your problem so you don't really know that but understand all my videos are there not to show you the capabilities of those uh, of those libraries it is there to solve the problems so the same problem so for an example the same compression problem could be solved by some other library tomorrow i and i will be sure sharing that also my intention is that to make your life easy when you are going to solve your own problems that is my you know primary goal with that said let us head to the collab notebook and also you if you like the content leave a like for this content and do share it with others because this technology is very important and many of uh, your colleagues and your friends and uh, you know the the overall industry as a whole is right now you know trying to wrap around uh, the concept of vector stores the embeddings you know working with various uh, libraries so this is becoming very prevalent so try to share it with others and discuss with them and if you have find any new in inputs or ideas do share it with me so that we can also discuss over the comment section Uh, also i'll be working on uh, uh, you know coming up with discord server or some way where we can <coughs> excuse me collaborate in a more holistic fashion so that is also something that i am thinking about so do subscribe to my channel and uh, further updates related to langchain and various other artificial intelligence models hugging face models open source libraries everything will be shared in this uh, in this uh, particular uh, channel with that said uh, let us go to the browser and uh, this is my channel that you you must be already aware and this is the page inside the uh, langchain documentation that speaks about contextual compression retriever they have given a very good example okay but however i am going to use a different example so the example that i will be using will be shared under compression retrievers.ipynb notebook inside the regular python de learners data uh repo so this repo is already will be the link will be given to you in the youtube description one thing that i want to add here is that the resources used for this particular uh, notebook is available under the resources folder so if you go under resources folder you will see there is a, a pdf called self ask pdf so this is a paper that is written uh, that was submitted in arxiv before some time and this task of this talks about self ask algorithm so here you will not be able to see that but uh, in, in once you download this particular repo or fork it you can fork it or you can start this repo so it will be also helpful for others to for track me you can get the necessary pdf to your local directory okay so this is uh, the basic th that i wanted to share let me go to the collab notebook 
So this is the collab notebook uh, that you can initiate from this particular, uh, sorry, from just a minute, let me show the old, uh, the IPMB notebook for you guys to easily understand. So you have to take this link, go to collab environment, say upload uh, notebook. And from there you can upload this link and start working on the GitHub, uh, start working on this Jupyter notebook. So you need all these libraries. So you need files, you need OpenAI, Langchain, TikTok and PyPDF. Why you will need all these things? Because you will see that what I'm going to do right now. So this first series of uh, library uh, modules is going to work with the PDF loader, PDF, uh, you know, text splitters, etc. And this second is where the new modules are getting introduced. So contextual compression retriever, the LLM chain extractor, embedding filter and LLM chain filter. And finally, we have additional uh, pipelines. So this is something that let me go back to the presentation. So when I was explaining these uh, concepts, right, I never touched about something called as pipelines. So when Langchain guys uh, introduced this uh, compression retriever, they also introduced something called as pipelines that you can uh, that you can create inside the Langchain environment. Uh, at this moment, I am not diving deep into that concept because I need to still understand the benefits of it, but in this video, I will be primarily concentrating on this extractors and filters. With that said, let us go back to the browser again and uh, let us begin the activity. So I am uh, reading this uh, selfask.pdf. So you can upload the PDF here, selfask.pdf and I am splitting it. I am using recursive. Cap. Okay, I am first loading it. If you are new to uh, how this PyPDF loader works, how the uh, splitter works, I have separate videos on that. Take a look at that. I will also attach those uh, videos here for your uh, reference. The playlist itself, I will attach it. And uh, I am, as you can see, this is a 25 page uh, PDF and I am not going to use all the 25 pages. I will be using only first two pages. And even in the first two pages, I will split the first two pages using recursive character splitter. This is what I'm doing. So you see uh, in this step where I'm loading the data from the uh, PDF, I get 31 pages and then I take the first two pages here. So you see this here, I'm taking the first two pages and I am again sending it to the splitter. And from that itself, I'm getting 77 documents. So you see the uh, difference, right? And you'll see that how you do the splitting it has a huge amount of impact on how you get the reply. So here I, you see that I have taken 150 uh, chunk size and 15 chunk overlap. If in case if you take uh, say 75, the answers that you will get will be really different. Okay. So it, understand that reducing the chunk size does not mean that you are going to get good answers. So that is uh, the concept. Uh, I don't know whether you guys are thinking in that way, but if you guys are thinking in that way, then it's wrong you need to have sufficient chunk size. So uh, let me actually show you. So what, what I mean, I will, uh, you know, uh, it is better that I discuss this uh, in, in a more detail here because I faced the problem. So the problem I faced was that I initially thought, okay, let me reduce the chunk size uh, to 75 and let me get good results. But actually, that's not how it works. So for an example, I am doing 150 chunk size here. And the first element that I'm getting is measuring and narrowing the compositionality gap in language model. So this is the complete heading that I'm getting from this PDF. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this here. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to reduce it to 50. OK, I'm not going to do any kind of embedding here. So you don't you don't need to worry about it. You see here that my my two pages actually becomes 215 documents. And if I take a look at this right now, you will see immediately that it will take a moment. You see that what happened? My heading itself got cut. So when you are going to use this kind of a very, uh, uh, you know, fine grained documents or texts inside your embedding. So next we will be doing embedding here. So we will be using embedding. We will be pushing it into uh, Fice database. When you are doing that, what will happen is the vector store will become very fine grained. And when you are trying to do similar research, it will give you all uh, you know wrong answers. And sometimes what will happen is instead of giving you uh, 10 documents, it will give you 25 documents. And even in 25 documents, you will not get the answer. So all these challenges will occur. And on top of it, whenever you are working on uh, any of these uh, 
any of these uh, uh, what is it called index vector stores they have inherent uh, number of documents that they send it out so inherently they send out four documents by default some you can actually control it by sending out one or two documents so you cannot get 25 documents in one uh, one search i will show you what i mean in a couple of minutes so this is an example that i'm showing it to you so you can also play with these things so this is what i say uh, this is what i call as practicing and uh, when you practice like this when you try to you know break the example that i'm giving and you find something interesting that is where you have learnt so you know following my example is one thing but breaking my example and trying to find something new is is really good uh, activity that you can do okay so uh, this is the step where i am taking that uh, face uh, taking these uh, tokens let me change it to 150 again so that i don't get confused and uh, here you see that it gives me 77 and you see that it gives me the complete heading now and i am going to embed it i have already done the embedding i am not doing it again i have already done the embedding you see that i also saved the embedding and the embedding folder name is a two page database so very simple right i am taking the first two pages of the self ask uh, pdf and then i am creating a retriever so this is the first basic step that you do till now so this is not uh, th there is no change till now okay so here i will show you something so when i say index db there is something called a similarity search so i can use similarity search and uh, let us actually do a basic similarity search of this particular query this has no <coughs> no additional uh, bells and whistles so this is a very basic retriever uh, this is a very basic vector index this is not even a retriever look at this this is not even a retriever this is a basic vector index store i am doing the similarity search so when i am doing the similarity search on this you will see this is a very raw context that you get okay and by default i am getting four documents you see that one two three four and four documents actually talk about all talk about compositionality gap now if i increase this to k equal to five so let us say six i am not sure whether i will have six but let me try yeah i am having six okay i am having six uh, documents inside the vector store that is related to this particular query now let us actually increase it to 20 let us see whether you are okay so you see there are 20 documents that is actually related to this particular uh, particular uh, query okay there is also one more thing so inside this uh, you must have already played with these things but i am showing it these things to you here because this is important and uh, uh, you know uh, keep this keep track of what i'm telling right now so you see the scores here so these scores are going to be useful in a couple of minutes so let me uh, uh, let me go further into the video so each of this we introduce the term compositionality gap to the describe the fraction of the compositional questions that so this is a part of the uh, document and this has a score of 0.25 and this has a score of 0.28 so you see the score is increasing continuously and uh, what will happen what will happen in real time when you are going to use the retriever is the retrieval will see the scores and it will retrieve the documents that are most relevant and then it will send the documents to llm this is what i was telling and this is a basic retriever <clears throat> now so this is where i am showing it to you that get relevant documents and i give this uh, what compositionality gap is and uh, you see these are the four documents that are very relevant to the question so this is the basic retriever there is no any kind of filter there is no any kind of compressor on this you have already used these things so this is not new what is new is what is going to come next so i'm going to create start an llm and yeah one more thing i uh, did not you know specifically tell this you have to place your open api key here so i am not using config parser or anything here because it was confusing earlier i had to use but nowadays i realized okay it's it's an unwanted hassle for you guys to follow up so i have totally removed that concept but yeah do remember when you are going to use uh, something in production something that you are going to share with other, others ensure that you are using config parser okay now uh, coming back to the first and foremost uh, uh, module that is llm chain extractor it's a class that gets initiated on the llm that is open a llm here it can be any llm that you want in the future there will go there will be going to be new llms so be ready to swap it out 
once you create this compressor you need to use that compressor the inside the contextual compression retriever so this is uh, also one of the abstraction layers that is getting formed around uh, the large language models around the vector stores etc so here you are going to create the extractor so this is going to do some certain things and you are going to have the base retriever and both of these things you are sending into contextual compression retriever so now this compression retriever is a contextual compression retriever object okay so we are going to work with the compression retriever and we are going to get the relevant documents and you see that i am going to get three relevant documents and the first and foremost i get is we introduce so here you see that i when i give a basic uh, retrieval i i get four but when i use a compressor i get three so there itself you see that one of the uh, main uh, one of the unwanted uh, document has been removed so this heading has been removed you see that right so heading is not going to be useful for me and also you see here the first document we introduce the term compositionality gap so this is what we want uh, the question here is what is compositionality gap right and uh, here this particular first document actually explains what it is and here this is the benefit of using compression uh, algorithm so first document itself gives you the answer this is the extract extractor now comes llm chain filter so when it comes to filtering the internal to the filter there is a process of checking the scores and it uh, do, does the compression accordingly okay you can use llm chain filter or you can use embedding filter so in case of llm chain filter you don't see what kind of score it is using internally okay i am not going to go into that but you can actually check the uh, you can go to you can just hover on this and you can go to the source and you can check the uh, internal implementation to understand it better but what i would suggest is after you go for <coughs> llm chain extractor the next i would suggest use embedding filter because this is more clear so you see here i actually say that give me a similarity threshold of 0.87 and once i do this and once i use this inside the retriever you see i get only one document i don't even get three documents okay i get only one document and that is perfectly relevant and you see the benefit of this instead of sending three documents to the llm i'll be sending one document and this means i'm going to save on my tokens also so that is a very big saving right <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> when you are going to use this inside an application which is uh, which is uh, used by so many customers every call to the <clears throat> llm can be reduced drastically the token that is given to the llm in every call can be drastically reduced so for an example if you are having 1000 calls and if your uh, token is reduced by 100 for each call then think about it <clears throat> it's going to be 100000 tokens so that is what i am talking about the scalability point of view is very important so right now i have introduced you to the embedding filter i have introduced you to the llm chain filter and to the uh, llm chain extractor also this is where i was talking about the uh, pipeline so you can create the text splitter so in my case i was using recursive text splitter but here i am introducing character text splitter and you can create an embedding redundant filter this is again similar to what you see here and then you can actually create the uh, uh, what is it called uh, the pipeline so the pipeline will have splitter the redundant uh, filter and the relevant filter so all these three things you can place it inside and then you can create a retriever so this is uh, this is little more complicated i really wouldn't suggest you guys to go in this route okay until unless you really understand what is going on you know you know that okay you need to use all these kinds of filters and uh, redundancy into the uh, into the mix uh, that is it is required if you are going to work on uh, you know mission critical extremely important applications like you cannot make any mistakes so assume that if you uh, if your application calls for a very strict uh, control on what is the output that is going to come out then it is better that you have all these kinds of filters because you must have already seen uh, that when you are working on various applications that the output becomes uh, uh, how output that comes out of uh, the vector store is totally different so these things can be avoided if you are going to use pipelines anyway you guys can play with these things i am not going to explain uh, i am not going to show it here 
as an example but i hope that now you, uh, let us go back to the pdf i hope that now you have, now you have got uh, overall understanding of what this compression uh, retriever is and how these compression retrievers work in real place and how it solves your challenge that is gaining higher quality context and distilled quality uh, distilled context also so with that said i would like to end this video with uh, uh, with this four words as usual but before that do subscribe to my channel so that you can get further updates on uh, langchain related uh, updates as well as uh, the various python ecosystem that i will be discussing on uh, and also most important point is guys uh, the idea of you know using the github repo sharing the resources is that you can fork it you can start practicing it and you can you know most importantly share it <laughs> that is very important the the more you share it the more people understand these things the faster this ecosystem will develop uh, what i have understood uh, recently is that it's not that you are, you have to understand one topic or one area you have to understand the overview the multiple ways of solving the challenges so that is the also one of the core uh, uh, core concepts that i use in this videos uh, i hope that you like it so do leave a like and with that said i would like to uh, end this video with four words as usual that is practice 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 see you guys and have a great time